there has been this protest that has been going on outside of BTS's label and their headquarters. If you are not aware, Sugar was recently part of a DUI incident. I believe he pleaded guilty and he had to pay some sort of fine. And I think that was it. And quite honestly, I thought this was over. I thought people kind of moved on and they stopped caring. But of course, if you're part of the K-pop community, you can do something and then 10 years later, get reminded of it. And within that 10 years time, be reminded of it every few months. And not even just reminded where you see a few tweets talking about it. You'll literally see it going outside of your headquarters for something that happened literally ages ago. Like he is quite literally going through his punishment right now. Let him finish his punishment first before you try to implement a new one. But there have been new funeral or death reefs outside of the headquarters stating the death of the boy band and asking the label to drop Shuga. And a lot of people have been thinking about trying to destroy them, the reefs, because they're so over this. However, these reefs are not created by one person or a bunch of fans. That's like just making them and putting them together and putting them there, it's actually made by a company. So you can't destroy them or ruin them, otherwise the company can then take legal action on you for destroying their property. However, one thing I will say about companies who participate in these petty fan things, I will say that they're just greedy for money because how do you read or take an offer like this where you know it's going to be outside of a label and it's not used for its intended purposes of a funeral and you're gonna then just take the money and allow people to pay for something like this? Some people think that the label will not respond to this and other people think that the label will respond and will actually do it. And it gets harder and harder for a K-pop label to not respond to controversy or criticism like this because it gets brought up every few months. And this is where I say there are definitely people within the K-pop community specifically that have a tremendous amount of mental illness because to harp on something so deeply and to stick on it for months on end and then to take legal action and spend your own hard money on something is such a disease mentally that genuinely these people need to find therapy because why do you care so much? If you have other things going on like in your life or if you have a job or if you have anything else like a partner or family or friends, you would not have the mental space to constantly be thinking about this. I don't think the label is going to respond because there is nothing to respond. Sugar is literally serving out his punishment right now. He's paying the fine and he's taking any punishment that he is going to receive from this. Any response from the label would be a bit silly. I don't think there's much that they can even say. And also aside from that, I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think they're going to drop him. If you're not aware, there have also been wreaths outside of the label's headquarters. Just to give a quick rundown if you're not sure what's going on, these are called death wreaths. And basically the point of it is to show that Shuka's career has died or that this is the death of the boy band and this is the community's way or the haters way of protesting and trying to get the label to do something and in this case they want sugar out of the band of course i don't know if i believe that this is people within the community that are actually upset i believe these are people who either didn't like sugar to begin with or didn't like bts to begin with and are looking for an opportunity to try to disband the group one by one because these haters are literally vultures. The moment that they see that one member can easily be pulled apart and be kicked out, suddenly they're gonna try to get the other members to be a part too and try to ruin the group. Now, people have obviously been very upset online over why this is happening, and they even attempted to try to take the REITs down. However, these REITs are private property, so if you do violate it or damage it, the company who owns it can, of course, sue you. But some people have then leaked pictures of people in front of the REITs and posted those pictures online without blurring those people to say that these are the people that are responsible for the reads. Now, how do they know that? I don't know. Did they go up to a random person and ask, hey, are you responsible for this? And then later stepped away and snapped a picture. Did you hear that they were bragging about it? Like, how can you tell? So this is the part that I disagree with. While I think it's extremely grimy and disgusting to even send something like this to a label and to even waste their own money but the community's money who are donating to do something like this like i don't agree with showing these people's faces and shaming them that way because what's actually going to happen is by showing these people's faces someone's going to figure out their name where they live whatever and by the way i do think it's absolutely disgusting on all accounts for someone to do something like the wreaths because i think if you use your money for something like this as opposed to donating it to like a homeless shelter or even use that money to support your own family because i'm sure your family could use that money Money, then that's disgusting. Inflation is so bad right now. Like it's generally really hard for people to afford groceries right now in the US. And instead of helping your friends, your family, your neighbors, the homeless shelter, you decide to spend thousands of dollars to donate to a cause like this to then send death wreaths to a label. This is the same type of insensitive action that the general population shames billionaires for. 
for spending their money on a yacht when there are people who are literally dying. So I highly disagree with this action, but then again, I don't believe that showing these people's faces is an ethical thing to do because it doesn't accomplish anything. Find a way to take legal action if you wanna take legal action, although you probably can't because you're suing on behalf of someone else, they would have to be the one to take legal action. But if you wanna beat them up in the parking lot later, then that's your business and I'll turn the other cheek. But don't show their face online. I feel like that's crossing a different line. Now, there are definitely people who think that of course she goes aware of this because it's quite hard to ignore something like this and they think that he might have a reaction to all this. It's pretty clear that he definitely is very much aware of what's going on because it hasn't just been the REITs, which I would imagine is a little bit easier to ignore if, if he just never goes into the office. But some people in the community have also sent food trucks outside next to it. So this, of course, changes a lot of stuff, right? Now, because now people are going to stop to not only take pictures of the REITs, but also to order some food, maybe sit there and eat, and it just draws more attention to it. But of course, there's also a significant meaning to this. So when people see food trucks, they see all of these crazy things there. It draws attention in a different way culturally. People are going to look because they're gonna be like, who died? Also, culturally in Korea, having food after a funeral is pretty much expected. So it almost completes the ritual or the ceremony, right? It makes it feel more eerie, more haunting, more crazy. So of course, this then makes headlines, people talk about it. And obviously people who are in the label are probably talking about it. So I just don't think that there's any way for Sugar to ignore this. Now, what a lot of people in the community have done to combat this, which is donate to causes to get billboard trucks in front of the label or buy out specific billboards near that location, try to fill it up with happy and nice posters. And for even some people in the community standing in front of the wreaths, showing their support with a poster or whatever to say that they love him and that this is a good way to combat that. And when he sees stuff like these wreaths and then he also sees support, he's gonna feel a lot better. Sometimes when people get a lot of backlash, they tend to forget that there is this other side that loves them and cares about them. So as long as they see even one or two people showing that type of love or support back, then they're probably going to feel a lot better and feel stronger to keep going. The most difficult part, I think, for when someone sees hate comments is not even the hate comment itself, but seeing the replies or seeing other people not defending them or seeing no one defend them at all. And the thing is, what a lot of people don't realize is if a mean comment makes its way to a forum that naturally hates that celebrity anyway, then the celebrity is not going to get defend it. So it also depends on where these comments are mentioned. Because if you mention it on a BTS forum that is meant to show love, then the idol will get defended if there's a hate comment. People think that Suga would be happy to see the support. People also think that he would ignore the comments. I can almost guarantee that he probably will have a song at one point referencing all this. Over the years, his lyrics address so much. He's talked about what people have said about him not enlisting yet. He's talked about so many other things. So I think he will address this and essentially what he's probably going to do is give an F you to the haters, which is what he's always done. And I think that's 100% justified because I think this is definitely going way too far. How can someone hate someone so much over something that they've done that has no involvement with the hater. That makes no sense to me. Like if I, like if you were to tell me a stranger did something, it would not upset me that much. If it's disturbing, I might be like, oh wow, that sucks. Oh, that person should be in jail if they're a murderer or whatever. But then I don't get like caught up in it and think about it forever, let alone the fact that like what Sugar did was on a scooter. So it's not anywhere as serious as murder. To have this sort of reaction is kind of crazy. There has been an account that has, in my opinion, pretended to be the person who had been sending the wreaths. They wrote that they were the one responsible and that they were the ones to protect the wreaths so people cannot destroy them. And then claim, since they are so powerful to be able to do all this, that they would be the one that would be capable of ending Sugar's life. With even claims of people saying that this person had been looking for Suga's address so that they could try to end his life with a weapon or something like that. This to me is absolutely crazy. I think when people read this, their first instinct and their first thought is, oh my God, we need to protect Suga. Like something really bad is going to happen. And this is obvious. I definitely agree that this probably needs to be looked into. But all this over what? Like what is the motive behind someone wanting to kill another person over them drinking and riding a scooter? Mind you, the person who will is allegedly behind the threats is not a person who's from Korea. They probably would very much be aware that in their country, this would not be considered a huge crime, but why are they upset anyway? When you break it down like that, to me, it's very clear that the person who is writing all of this, who's making all of these threats, is doing it for the sole reason of trying to get attention. They don't actually wanna hurt them. They don't actually know anything about him and they don't wanna do anything. They just wanna go viral online. 
Now, the other half of this that makes me very confused is when people start showing these accounts and saying that this person and the account is the same, but then the names don't match up. And then they're saying that I did my research, trust me, but we're supposed to just sit there and believe that the usernames all match up to the same person. And that's the part that's confusing to me because clearly this is not all the same person. And sometimes they'll show different faces and then claim that this is all the same person. So to me, at least it's clear that there's a lot of I mean, different information coming out at once. And a lot of it may not be true, but it all makes a really great story to go viral. So I think that that also enhances this and it creates this environment where more people are going to want to make up these things and do these things because they know that they have a huge opportunity to go viral. Now, wanting to do this to go viral makes a lot of makes a lot more sense because clearly their parents didn't hug them enough. Because in my opinion, as someone who has helped other businesses grow on social media and helped other influencers go viral on social media, going viral without the opportunity to make money is pointless. And these people who are doing this do not make any money from doing this. So they just clearly want attention, in which case they probably have no friends or family members that love them, which to me is actually very sad. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for just leave a comment right here. Love you. Bye.